Next question is from Sean Bailey Math. What accessory exercises do you recommend for building the deadlift? One of my favorite ways to get stronger, and there's a lot of different ways that you can uh, increase your deadlift if you're stuck, but one of my favorite ways to, to, to get my deadlift to go up is to use uh, some form of progressive resistance. So this can come in the form of chains, or it can come in the form of resistance band. So uh, a resistance band would be attached to the barbell, either either under my feet or uh, under a you know a rack or something that's going to anchor it. Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening is as I lift the weight off the floor, you know, as bands get stretched, the resistance gets harder and harder as you stretch them out, just like a rubber band, right? So at the bottom of the rep, when I'm my weakest, the weight isn't there isn't that much more weight from the band. But as I lift the weight and as I tend to get stronger in my lift anyway, it adds more resistance. So what it's doing is it's adding resistance as I get stronger. Because when you're doing a lift, some parts of the lift are easier than others. So it's a great way to overload the areas that you're stronger and not overload the areas that you're weaker. A chain does the same thing. If I put a chain around the bar, let it sit on the floor. As I pick up the bar, the links come up off the floor and the bar gets heavier and heavier. And this method of progressive resistance mm. uh, is super effective. Studies are pretty clear on this. Strength gains are faster. It's great for breaking through plateaus. And it's also great uh, for building muscle. So that's one of the easy, yeah. simple ways I, I, I would say. I love doing that. And I also, uh, I love doing deficit deadlifts, like, uh, you know, and just adding a platform and standing on it, get, uh, you know, address certain parts of the lift that you, you struggle with the most. That's one of them that, you know, you can lighten up the load, but then really, uh, you know, gain more access in, in, in recruitment where you need it more. And so that's one way to work on that. And then you can also add the chains like, like South Saint or bands to, you know, intensify that even more. Uh, and then just having a different stance, you know, trying, you know, the sumo stance uh, and working on that to, you know, reinforce the hips and everything else, uh, you know, involved in the lift even more. You said uh, deficit deads. Here's an easy way to do this uh, at home. So tip, traditionally what guys will do is they'll, they'll stand on something so that now they have to bend down to get deeper to lift the deadlift. That's why it's called a, a deficit. So rather than pulling it off the floor and your feet on the floor. Just do smaller now plates. You're, yeah, just those smaller plates. So That's true. Tra the 25s. Tra the traditional the height that people deadlift is the height of the circumference of a 45-pound plate. Mm -hmm. Some people who can't deadlift the 45-pound plate will get lighter plates, but they're the same circumference. So it's that that's their traditional height. Put you know 35s or 25s on the bar. Now you rather than having to stand on something, you just have to get down lower. But I will say this: if you do a deficit deadlift, you better make yeah. sure you brace your core yes. and go light. You're very susceptible if your lower back. So be totally, conscious of totally. That. So I have one that uh, did wonders for my deadlift, and I love to teach this. And that is barefoot single leg deadlifts. Uh, you can go on my Instagram and look back. I know I've got at least two videos in the last year that mm -hmm. I've posted of me doing this. Um, I love this too in a time right now because it doesn't. Most people will have to start with really light dumbbells the first time because just balancing on one leg and getting down to the ground to pick up dumbbells is extremely challenging for a lot of people. So you have to start really, really light. Um, and then, so it gives you lots of room to progress and man, if you can get to a point where you can do that with, you know, 50, 60, 90 or hundred pound dumbbells, uh, and you can do that balancing barefoot, uh, on one leg and do a, a single leg deadlift, watch what happens when you go back to traditional deadlifts. Uh, the, just the, the grounding of that, the stability, the hip stability that you get from that, the ankle stability that you get from that the unilateral training strength that you're going to get, and then you go back to bilateral, both feet on the ground, a t traditional deadlift. Man, I I never felt so connected and grounded to my deadlift than when I actually took a break from deadlifting and I tried to progress my single leg uh, deadlift. That was incredible. And you know what? That's a great one mm -hmm. for right now because- Right, that's if, why I thought of that. Yeah, because yeah, totally. if, if people are at home, you don't need a lot of weight to do a single leg deadlift. In fact, for most, you know, beginner to intermediate lifters, no weight. Uh, you just you just bend over, you know, keep good form, yeah. touch the floor with your toes, and then stand up. And you can get creative with this. I, we had somebody in our um, in our forum that, or not our forum, I think on on Instagram that tagged us. 
that was using jugs of water. Like, you know, so maybe you don't have a set of dumbbells that goes all the way up to whatever, but you can use the one gallon jugs. Then you can use like five, progress up to eventually getting five gallon jugs. Man, you do that and get good at that and doing single leg deadlift. Boy, I'll tell you right now, watch what happens. Dude, most people need no, no weight, I'll right. be honest. I, no. I'll, I'll take people and I'll have yeah. them do it with, and they're just, they're all falling all over the place. Yeah, it's no way. Start with that. Watch what happens. But it's a great. That's a yeah, great exercise and, and for right now. Make sure too, like you, you just notice little things, like your your heel kind of turning in, and any rotation that's involved in that. Yeah. Try and stays. So we have some YouTube's on that to make sure that you're doing the form correctly. But definitely give those a yeah. shot. Now, look before I sign off, uh, I want to give a special uh, shout out to our friend, uh, Doctor Jolene Brighton. She's been on our yes. show a couple times. We absolutely love her. Um, first time we met her, we loved her. She's got great information, um, great Instagram page. You know, she she focuses on women's health. Wrote some really good books on the birth control yeah, she's pill. She's going and, through it right now. And um, she's got uh, you know she's got the coronavirus. Um, she was at the hospital. They gave her some oxygen therapy. They're sending her home with an oxygen tank as of the recording of this podcast. Um, and you know she's a big believer in uh, collective consciousness and in, 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 in their studies to show that when people pray or wish somebody to be better, um, that they, they tend to get better. Can't explain it. Um, but she's, because she's a believer in it. Uh, and if you're a religious person, uh, you know, send, say a prayer for Dr. Jolene Brighton, mm -hmm. let her know you're hoping that she gets better. If you're not religious, send her good vibes. Um, we hope you get better soon. Um, we hope you beat this and you're okay. And, um, and, and that's that. And, and with that, go to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all of our free guides and resources. We got a lot of books there and guides that are totally free. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal. And you can find Adam at Mind Pump Adam.